seems that the dummies have re-enabled their combat protocols. What? Why? No, hang on. Let's see where this goes. No, let's not see where it goes. Let's begin. Rage Room is set in a weapons testing facility. Here you will be attacking many dummies with various weapons. There is only teleportation and snap turning, but with the teleportation, you can choose to have your body instantly teleport to a location or slide to a location. You really do need to stand whilst playing this game to allow for more wider arm swings. If you do play seated, your virtual self will be low to the ground. It's playable, but not as enjoyable. Unfortunately, there is no height adjuster slider in the options menu, and holding down the options button on the dual shot also doesn't adjust the height. A few games have come out recently lacking this option, and it's a shame to see its absence this far into the PSVR's lifetime. Once you kill a series of dummies, a button appears in the room. When pressed, it will spawn a new weapon and new dummies will appear. There is quite a few weapons in this game, so I'm not going to list them all, but will try my best to show off a great variety of them. You will be handling weapons weapons such as swords, which you basically just swing around, a bow and arrow, although you might have tracking issues with it, daggers that you can throw, but instead of aiming them with your hand, they will always hit the target scene, which is controlled by where you are looking at with the headset. It can take a little getting used to. And then you have fist weapons, such as boxing gloves, they're okay, as they do entice you to move your arms in a different way. The most interesting weapons here are for more creative ones, like the bubble blowing gun and a boxing glove that is on a spring. But unfortunately, not a whole lot of these more creative ones make an appearance. Some weapons make different impact sounds, and some even have the same sound effects tied to them, which makes them seem like they are made out of the same material. All of the weapons just don't feel that powerful, and even when you finally kill a dummy, and it falls to pieces to the ground, the sound effects just lack any real impact. As you can see, some of the weapons do handle differently, but most of the melee weapons cause the dummies to react the same way when they have been hit, which is unrealistic. You would expect them to be sliced from a blade, instead of being knocked back in the same manner as an impact from a baseball bat, and sometimes they don't even react at all. Their reactions are quite unreliable, and nothing really feels like it's making an impact like it should. Your weapons can even get stuck in the dummies, which results in them being sent flying all over the place. Officially, it does look funny, but the lack of control of where they move to just hurts the enjoyment. They sometimes react properly to a hit, and it's great to see, but it just doesn't happen often enough. Each impact on a dummy reveals some numbers that represent how much damage you've done, but they never really seem to be right. Sometimes a faster and more powerful swing from me had a smaller number appear than a slower and less powerful swing. It was confusing, and ultimately removes the fun of creating little challenges for yourself where you try to beat your last damage amount. It makes the inclusion a bit pointless, and it's a shame that you can't turn them off in the options menu. There is a bit of a storyline here, which is told through voiceovers. Over time, you learn that the dummies are taking control over the facility, but nothing major really changes during this. The room continues to be the same, and the objective is the same. Sure, at first the dummies are static and then come alive, but the story lacks any real impact, much like the rest of the game. Drones try to change up the gameplay slightly, but ultimately are less fun to play around with than the dummies, as they only hover near you, and they do actually become more of an annoyance than anything else, as they put glowing shields on for dummies. Hitting a dummy with a shield on won't damage it, so you must destroy the drone first. After the drone has been destroyed, you can damage the dummy, but the shield remains there. It can cause confusion, momentarily. A few whacks on the drone will make them explode, and the explosion is visually quite nice, along with the rest of the visuals, as the image quality is quite sharp. But really, the testing facility is quite a dull looking place. The dummies really are ruthless, even when you break off an arm or leg, they will continue to fight on. If an arm comes off, 
they will attack with the other, and if a leg comes off, they comically hop around. Although they are quite clever, when it comes to attacking you with different body parts, the AI is incredibly dumb. They don't take into consideration what weapon you're holding, or what movements you make, resulting in them always running and launching themselves in your direction, which does lead to them clipping through you. You won't worry about their attacks either, as you are invincible and there is no game over screen. It does make the process of defeating each series of dummies quite tedious, due to the lack of any real challenge, especially towards the end of the game, which really doesn't take that long at all to get to. It took me only 40 minutes to beat the main game, but the game does also include two extra modes which are unlocked after beating the main game. The challenge mode has seven different stages to take on. In these, you are on a time limit and must deal a certain amount of damage before time is up. Each one of these challenges has themed weapons in, such as construction site tools and sports equipment, and new weapons that you don't get to play with in the main game do make an appearance here. This mode is incredibly boring and repetitive though, as the fastest way to increase your score is to simply wave your arms around constantly. I do apologise for not knowing how long it takes to complete all of these, as I haven't done so. I do usually take pride in knowing everything a game has to offer, but doing this over and over again is just a waste of my time. The other mode is a free play mode, which nearly serves as a sandbox mode. I say nearly, as you must kill dummies which reward you with points that you can then spend on spawning new weapons. So there is a bit of grinding here. This mode is a good inclusion, as you are able to freely mess around with the weapons that you want. I can't show the trophies, as they do seem to be messing up on PSN. When you play the game, some are rewarded, but they don't appear under the main trophy page. For the time being, just know that there isn't a platinum here, which is a bit of a shame, considering the high price of the game. I can imagine a younger audience will get a bit of mindless fun from this title, but for older people, the flaws with the physics engine and lack of any real challenge due to your virtual self being invincible will likely make the journey a bit dull overall. The variety in weapons is the best bit about the game, and is really the only reason to see it through to the end. There is certainly a bit of joy to be had when a new weapon presents itself, but I just can't help but think that the game would have been more enjoyable if it had launched when the PSVR first released. Least. Most of the weapons found here have appeared in other VR games and they work a lot better in them. It is extremely overpriced for the amount of content here, and although some may see some replayability lurking here due to it having many weapons to use, most will get bored with them during their first playthrough. Once again, a much younger audience are far more likely to want to smack the dummies around again. Overall, the game feels like a hidden developer room, where they are testing out how to make weapons work in VR games, and how to make AI move around in a virtual space and interact with the player. The fun fundamentals are there, but they're never fully explored, and too many things just don't work as well as intended. It feels more like a showcase of gameplay elements when VR was first born. The game does appear to be like a bit of fun, from the footage scene, but when you actually play it, you just can't look past the game's flaws. If you found this review helpful, please give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for more PSVR content.